I had the opportunity to go to New York City and sketch all day with Ian Finley. And it was an awesome experience. And in this video, I want to share with you some things that I learned while sketching with him because he is quite a teacher, isn't he? I'm going to be sharing how I sketched a certain scene that he's sketching. Then we're going to stop that video and I'm going to share my sketch next to his, you know, where he's got just the colors and I just have the colors and it still kind of looks like a rough work in progress. Then we're going to go on. Oh, you'll see me sketch the rest of it or finish the watercoloring and highlighting that. And we'll again, look at his end product and my end product. And you're going to see the difference. And there is a significant difference. And his technique is awesome. I just love how it comes out to expressiveness. He's not so concerned about being so literal with the shapes and forms and colors. And as an architect, I've been raised for 30 years doing architecture and drawing buildings the way they should be looking and on paper uh, as if it was a photograph. And that's not what Ian does. He's expressing what his feelings are of that scene. And I'm trying to learn that too, using him as an example. And let's see if I did a good job on that or not. Now you'll notice I was sitting right next to Ian. I mean, I was like three feet away from him. And you also might notice that my voice just carries. So I didn't really discuss what I'm doing when I'm doing it on the sketch. And I just didn't want to get my voice into his workshop recording. So that's why I was quiet while I was doing my sketch. And that's also why I'm doing a voiceover throughout the video that you're about to watch. I know this picture is blurry and that's fine because it's going to help accentuate these three areas that are in this picture and, and what I viewed when I was about to do a sketch of this. The first one is this white area over here on the left side of that street and it's got this really cool light post that is right in the foreground and it's got signs on it and Ian is really big on signs. In fact, while I was um, drawing my part, he was asking about what is this one sign in that same general area? That, why, why does it say no standing? And then, you know, in England, they don't have that sign. And so we were explaining to him what that means. There's also the center area and that area is kind of blurry even in Ian's and my sketch. You know, sometimes the center is a focal point of a drawing, but in this case, we're going to just kind of let it kind of blend out. And then the next area is on the other side of the street. So we have the three areas and that also has a few light posts and signage on it. And this one light post, has got shoes dangling off of it. And I was going to make sure that I sketched those shoes dangling off of that because it's kind of the character I'm seeing of this intersection here. It's kind of fun. Like Ian, I started with a Tombow felt uh, brush pen. And this has the felt brush on one side and it's, uh, it's actually kind of a broad stroking brush. And on the other side, it's really, really fine. And it's with that, you'll notice how I'm kind of holding it on its end at the very beginning when I'm making the overall outline. And I'll explain a little bit more while you'll see me doing that. You can see I was starting to sketch this by holding the end of the felt brush pen, but then I kind of hold it closer and closer to the tip and that's the architect in me. I'm trying to be a little bit too exact early on on this really quick sketch. When Ian uses these Tombow pens just to outline the picture itself, he's mindful that these pens are water-based. And when they have, when they're on the paper and then the watercolor goes on it, it kind of washes away the gray lines. So before, between the time he puts his Tombow light 
uh, water base pen markings on there like I'm doing here and when he puts the watercolor he'll actually highlight it a little bit with a fine tip uh, black permanent ink marker and you'll see that on the next step and so with this I'm showing windows I'm showing the edges of buildings I'm trying not to show all the detail within the windows just showing rectangles where I want them and you're going to notice how I tend to place almost the accurate number of windows on there while Ian again is looking for the feeling that he sees in this scene and he doesn't care how many windows there are and so he kind of abbreviates the number of the windows as you'll see later on when he starts fleshing out his drawing which looks fabulous I'm also putting some storefronts in there um, windows for the storefronts curb lines for the streets trying to keep myself mindful about the perspective but later on you'll see a little comment about my perspective the next step was using this fine liner it's fine on one side and it's really broad on the other I didn't use the broad one until really one of the last steps but the second step is where I actually put a little bit more of a fine line on a lot of that area this is a permanent ink pen and the one I'm using is by a company by the name of artist loft and you know you can pick up this in any store here in this area in the Northeast there's a arts and crafts store called Michaels but uh, you can buy this in Amazon you can buy this at other places and you don't have to stick with this this brand there's all kinds of permanent ink uh, fine tips that work really well I don't have a, a size of this pen this one's just a, a very fine tip it calls it I believe somewhere it doesn't have the number of the pen but um, if I were to guess it would be probably I don't know 0.5 so let's keep on sketching I'm sketching the traffic lights and there's the storefront doing some of the dentals that are on the underside of the cornice and a little signage little sandwich sign that's out on the sidewalk that kind of adds character to it and then the windows making sure that all the windows are vertically aligned um, you know that's me being a little bit particular but I think it does make a big difference and drawing those shoes dangling off the the traffic light post gives character and part of the um, the emergency exit you know they have these little balconies and the uh, egress stairs going down the side of the building that kind of adds a little bit of the 3d character to it and then some more windows you can see that I kind of bounce around a little bit I'm doing windows quite a bit here but I'll bounce around so that I can keep myself a little bit loose and not too focused on small little details it kind of pulls me away from doing too much detail on those one items and I'll go on and do something a little bit different and come back to it the storefront's got some really cool character and I noticed that when Ian drew his storefront um, he kind of abbreviated it to where it doesn't really stand out as a prominent feature in the drawing so I thought that was an interesting take and in how he saw this space differently than I did and then they had little cute little lanterns uh, little wall sconces that kind of curl out then I went, get, went on the other side of the uh, street to try to balance it out putting the signage there this one here had a little sticker of a bulldog on the traffic light which I thought was kind of cool and one way signs are kind of fun and that's something that I picked up on with Ian as well and then no standing sign making sure that that's in there because it's part of my story hey thanks a lot for watching give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to this channel we have the makings of a great picture of a scene and it's framed with the uh, light post on the left side and the one in the middle 
and also the dangling shoes off of the other light post to the right. So now I have two light posts on either end, a perspective that's skewed uh, and with the streak going in between there. My horizontal line is pretty good, except right there on the storefront, it gets a little bit off, but hey, this is urban sketching and it's all for the emotion and feeling. So the next step is putting color on. And I used this uh, Windsor Newton travel coloring case, and it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, 12 different colors. And I try to limit my use of colors to three or four and then combine them a little bit. And when you do that, you might want to select colors that are complementary to each other. So red, green, um, amber, which is kind of an orange color with the, the blue. Uh, those are, I believe, what I used and it works out really well. It's a pure color. It, it doesn't get too muddy because you're not using too many colors. It's worked really well for me. I started using a flat brush just so I can get some broad strokes of color splashed around the picture. You know, when I'm watercoloring onto a black and a white drawing that I've done with permanent ink, it's kind of like painting over a, you know, just a coloring book as a child. So it's kind of like an adult coloring book. When I'm putting the blue in there, I learned from Ian to use that as kind of an accent also as a shade and shadows element. So the accents are the two light posts on the end and kind of in the back too, but mainly framed by the light post on the ends. And using the blue really helps highlight that. And using these yellows, I'm using the cadmium yellow from Windsor Newton. And that pops out the special elements like the traffic lights and the signage that's the traffic signs and things like that too and using that rigor really thin brush it's almost like having a pen with watercolor on it because you can really place that color exactly where you want it i used only four main colors and that's ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and i used cadmium yellow and some of the crimson hue but then i needed some green for the sap green i used from winsor newton to do the trees in the background so it's kind of you know i like how ian actually mixes colors and not using pure paint colors uh, i did not do that on this one and maybe i will on the next next attempt when i compare the two ian's on the left and mine on the right i found that when ian did his painting you'll notice that he has vertical areas about four of them of different colors and i thought that was really really interesting because it allows your eye to simply see the overall picture kind of stacked vertically to each other and comparing it to mine where I have spots of colors and paints all over the place. Yeah, I like the order and organization that Ian used in his painting with all those verticals. And then he mixes colors to give a little bit more interest. For example, where the middle of the street where he has uh, trees in the background, he has a green and it's mixed with blue. And then that is Again, it's kind of mirrored over in the storefront on the bottom right. So it kind of ties itself together. As opposed to mine, I have this green that's a pure green from the palette, not really mixed with other colors that are already on the palette. So the organization that he uses, I think is just something really wonderful. The next step is using these felt tip brush pens. And they're gray with kind of a cold uh, gray and warm grays all mixed together and i'm using these to put some shades and shadows throughout it also can kind of blend in with the watercolor now the watercolor is pretty much dry so it doesn't blend in a whole lot i practiced a little bit on a, another uh, watercolor that you can see in another video where i deliberately put the tombow 
felt uh, water base um, brush pens onto a kind of damp watercolor and it kind of blends together which is kind of a cool feature but here i wanted to be able to have a full response of the gray tones so that i can really put a shade and shadows on them the sun is over to the right shoulder and so you'll see that i'm kind of putting these things on the left side of certain objects so the next step is actually using this uh, fat end of the felt tip. It's a permanent marker, like I said earlier. And, and in some areas, I may go back and hatch with this fine tip. Here I'm using the fine tip side of the pen, not the broad side. Use the fine tip for hatching and showing sidewalks and some details around the windows and the name of the street and the street signs. And then I go back with the, the fatter, uh, broader one to really give some pop to the edges of the buildings and edges of the, the uh, light posts and uh, the tops of the buildings I, and the cornices. And I can use the, the broad pen also to show the shadows uh, made from window frames to kind of pop out give it a little bit more of a three-dimensional three-dimensional value and also gives the edges of the streets and there i'm doing the one-way sign making it black and uh, that's something that ian loves to do is to do the signage all around a streetscape which i picked up on now let's check out how Ian drew this scene and compare it to the way I did. So again, you can see the vertical areas of Ian's sketch, the yellow on the left with the street sign and that's skewed a little bit to the left and then uh, progresses to the right with another one way sign that's not all painted black with the trees in the background and the way he did the trees is he used some greens and blues kind of mixed them together in various parts using the blue kind of as a highlight around the the one-way sign and then he uses little curly q kind of fine tip markings and doodled around to make kind of an indication of leaves and things like that for the trees in the background compared to mine i'm using kind of some jaggedy felt tip uh, pen movements for the trees just to show that there is some irre irregular shapes to where the, the leaves are. And then on his also, he's got the building on the right. That seems to be the focal point of his sketch. You've got the street sign, street, street light on the left with the one way sign and a street sign, a street light, uh, post on the right with a one-way sign that's the framing and then in the middle he's using red kind of as your focal point of this picture and that facade he really kind of uh, minimized what really was there there were a lot more windows than what he drew he just indicated windows almost three-dimensionally um, and then the cornice on the top near the roof where you see those black squares that's showing more of a dentals and those dentals really have a pop because the black has got such contrast and he would add that later you did not see that when we were comparing his and mine with just the wash of watercolor but this really brings in a three-dimensional uh, element to it and some interest and then on the facade to the right of the red, it's all white. It's still the same brick building, but he didn't uh, put much color on that facade. He just indicated it's kind of the same color when you put the red around the windows and put some red around the dentals at the cornices. And he used black there too, but a little bit more sparingly so that the red seems to my mind in my mind in my eyes i see the red area is kind of like the focal area and then the right side where the white facade is and some red on the dentals that's a little bit more of a minor uh, facade compared to the red and down below the storefront is a lot more two-dimensional than mine mine i have 
more the windows kind of showing shades and shadows and depth whereas he's just kind of indicating yep there's windows here's a rectangle for it it's not so important in his picture because he's focusing it appears to me with the red facade is kind of like the focal area and then he's got this whimsical bit about him which i love about ian and there was a bicycle that was parked on a post out of the frame of our scene but he brought it into this scene and he leaned it up against that right uh, traffic light post just to show some interest he did not show the dangling shoes i did um, and because i i was so literal on the windows and in that building behind it those shoes kind of get lost whereas his he's using some black punch with these lights uh, the three traffic lights and that really pops it in a three-dimensional form um, and with the white background of that one facade it really kind of gives it a lot more depth and, and in my opinion more interest than even what mine is showing so those are things and tips that I learned about how he organized his, his painting. Another thing is the skewing. I think I mentioned that before, but that I really love that skewing part because it's so contrary to what I do as an architect, having vertical lines. And I was really working at skewing it. And I kind of did, but you wouldn't really see that in this end product. And um, I would love to be able to kind of loosen up even more. And Ian's really inspired me to do so.